other side we have Colt Give, lots of malls and short swords here, a couple of muskets and a short bow and only a couple of pikes on the sides of the defenders for Odin's Legion. Uh, we're going to pay attention to where these whole setups going to be prior to the battles and uh, what units are going to be used because as you can see there's lots of pikes, IPGs, there's some Fort Abrasio, some palace guards there on the attack and on the defense, oh I wasn't even quick enough to look at that there. So on the defense they've got similar setups, a couple of Iron Reapers in there as well with a uh, set of ball boys. That's going to be interesting to see where they're putting them on the defense. Yeah, especially for the first part here, whether they're just trying to chuck them at the top of the stairs. And as for normal, we're always going to try and pay attention to everything that's going on in the map. We'll pay attention to as high as we can get up and get as low um, and as much perspectives of the battles as we can do um, with the use of the map. So as you can see, Z map for some reason always pans us out miles away. Luckily, we know where we're going. Into the sky. What a silly, silly map set up here. And as you can see, first of all, there we go. We are ready and ready to go. We're going to pay attention to where these... Name tags are just directly below here on the stream for now. And obviously the starting part here, we're always going to see everybody trying to get their uh, uh, units uh, close to the wall, away from the defense, uh, away from any of the, the musket bombs and musket players that might potentially look to take as much damage as possible here. Sorry, I'm just moving now the way there a second. And then... We will get rid of the tab. And this uh, map thing is so annoying. There we go. And there we go. So, first of all, the same old idea. We're waiting on the siege tower to be deployed and make their way up to the wall. Nobody really making any effort to get onto the wall. It's Jackie Tree around the back here, as you can see, making quite a quite an interesting idea to come up here, trying to distract as many heroes. Ruffle along there, crazy. Uh, president just in the back there trying to keep uh, keep their eyes off what's going on in the battle. A couple of heroes already. There's going to be so so much interest in CC ability of pikes going on here and I'm wondering if this is going to play well in their favour. Uh, the fact that they have so many many pike players and so many medium armour players. Go serves! <laughs> So that's uh, the gateway now just been breached and we will just uh, just see people waiting and using that as a bait. You've got Malkula down below here, you've got a couple of heroes just kind of ch checking to see what we've got in here. So as you can see a set of Fort Abrasio through the, the main gate there from Crazies. You've got a couple of heroes just making sure they, they cause the nations up top, destroying the artillery stuff up there. But here we go, we're going for a full push on B. Everybody, no defense on B whatsoever on the side of Odin's Legion, just giving B without any units even being up on the wall. You have mass flames, you have everybody coming up both sets of siege towers, and Odin's Legion guys are defending between A, the supply point, and A point. So this is going to be interesting to see what they set up here now, because the units that we have on the attack, as you can see, palace guards, there's flamers, you've got lots of palace guards out there, Modal, IPGs, uh, and Fort Abrasios. And no IPGs actually, it's all for Abrasio. So we're gonna be interested to see how they decide to push this from here. Big big cluster up here at the top of the wall. Remember there is no artillery to be used as well. So because there is no artillery, there is no whittling down of units from a far distance unless you have potentially a musket or a uh, or a short bow or a longbow player on your team. But Surf Slayer's deciding to go all the way around to the home point. Interesting strategy. They're going to try and bait as many players as possible. Using them trebs as, like a, as a deterrent here. Almost taking out some of their own units on that wall there. But treb doesn't really do anything. Everybody goes around the back here. They're going to go around onto home. And they're going to just try and cap home and get some people to kill as many of the units as possible. Odin's Legion might be freaking out thinking, hold up, what are they going to do here? You're going to send all your units around the map, what are we doing? There we go, we get a better perspective here, you can see the full map as everybody rotates 
around from the main A gate. Sir Slayer's just sending their whole stack all the way around to try and go around the back of C. Jackie Tree leading the charge. Lex followed up, followed by Flare Star. But Odin's Legion's full rotating. Have we got any players back here from... No, we don't. We don't have any back players back there from Serfs. So it is a full, full rotation of their units one way or the other. Interesting strategy. Interesting to see how this is going to work out here. Surf Slayer is just sending a big cluster together, using the tribes as a, as a deterrent so that they don't send units there whatsoever. Now we're going to split them up and push towards C here. Ruffle coming around the back right hand side here. Now it's going to be all down to the defensive side of things. Who, who fights first? Who gets into the battle and starts the battle first here? Trebs are going to be so good here if they can get them to hit. Just like that one there. Slightly hits as all three sides push in to fight here. Interesting strategy, interesting way of playing this here. Who's going to go down first? Luko Steel is the first to die. Then Elden Fox dies down. There's a couple of heroes dying quickly here. Lots of the cluster going on, but there's a little bit of point cap here. You've got so many Pike players coming in, trying to do some work. Thomas Fox picks up another kill there. But it does look like this is going in the way of uh, Odin's Legion. Not going to lie, that Surf Slayer's numbers do look like they're whittling down at this point in time. It's pretty close though, it is pretty close. Lots more units on the side of Odin's Legion. Um, there is a lot of people up here, but as you can see, there are still seven heroes alive for Surf Slayers, but only, only a few units that are available there, to be honest. So the, the tribes didn't really take out enough units. Still more units on the side of Odin's Legion. They're fighting for the supply point down here, Dark Flames, Buck, ZX, oh, both of them go down, so it's just ZX here, and it looks like Odin's Legion have done a fantastic job to deter the Surf Slayers down here as we move down towards the push of A. We're going to try, they're going to try pushing A now, obviously with them spawning in quite quickly, they try to use that as their bonus, there's 10 versus 14 defense, but Cav's charging through. It's a nice wee calf there. There's lots of people dying though. Lex, Lex takes another kill there. Fury is down. Well, lots of people from Surf's on the point though, ready to cap A. Now it's all about getting the units on the point. Sending in the calf charges from all over the place. There's multiple charges coming off there for A's point here. And now it's whether the, the push here from Odin's Lady managed to push him off of the point. As you can see, you've got Luko Steel, Fury to, fighting on the point here with the short sword. Colt give also on the edge of the point, just making sure that things are going on there. And in the background, there's so much going on, but the supply point here as well. Mass Claims and Lex trying to stop anybody cap taking units out of the cap there, the supply point. And this supply point is still free, but plenty plenty to fight for here still on Odin's Legion if they can get in the numbers. But looks like the majority on this push here is worked in the favour of Surf Slayer. Surf Slayer's now managed to push herself out, keeping units on the point, but... Whoever is controlling the units down here, stopping that cap, them Iron Reapers. But A will be taken. Odin's Legion done a good job there. Good, good job in terms of defending that now. Now they just need to make sure they get back into place and don't get themselves caught out here. There's plenty of heroes. Ruffle trying to survive here. The short sword himself trying to get himself back but doesn't make it out alive. Kara kicks up that pit kill there. And then you've got Crazy and you know, all that managed to make it back. So we've got down to nine defenders available from Odin's Legion. So it was, it kind of did work. It's a kind of deterrent there for Surf Slayers. Surf Slayers took them all around to sea. Probably knew they weren't going to get sea, but knew when it came to supply and, and actually surviving the battle and coming back into the fight, they'd be able to go straight in and push towards the final, uh, the A point, and grab that point. And they have done so. They've grabbed the A point. Still got a decent amount of numbers, both of them on a similar amount of numbers, 710 units here. We'll have a quick look at what units we have out here in terms of each side here. Surf Slayers. Still, yeah, still, still a good set of units out. Couple of Palace Guards, we've still got Fort Abrasio, you've still got the Modal, some Iron Reapers, and in defense, Iron Reapers, Fort Abrasios, Palace Guards, and a unit of IPGs. So we're gonna see where the pushes are coming from here now. Says this must be a no, wife of G30. Oh, why have you just had to call it wife of G30? What happened to the original one, Honey Bunny? 
Wife of G is a here and live in the chat, guys. Say hello, welcome to her. Wife of G Ferry. Wait, wait, wife of G Ferry, because she's, she's an old woman now. Oh, President Emily has gone off of the wall unintentionally, but survives and gets back up the wall here. Just kick it down the walls as all of them push up with pole axes. Look at this, they've changed from all pikes to all pole axes. Now there's so many pole axes on the Surf Slayer side. Literally pushing up and down the hill here. What are we going to see what's around the back there? Because there is only a small set of unit palace guards there around the back. And all the pallet, uh, all the pole axe players are fighting on there, trying to see anti-CC. But are falling, they are falling quite quick here down here. As much as they're all CC units and the... Uh, CCable characters, they're just not really doing very much down there. They're, they're committing themselves quite quite, uh, quite a lot there in terms of just their unit, uh, just their hero and not units. So, interesting to see uh, a strategy being played like that. An interesting strategy. Orange Legion doing, doing a pretty decent job of uh, rotating out and back. Not getting over in here. Orange Legion 14 people alive, only 4 alive for Surf Slayers, so they'll all be back in spawn and trying to set up here. As you can see, Lex, Grim and ZX, 3 of the 4 that are still alive, going to the supply point, making sure they can get uh, units replenished and uh, heal back up again. But you don't want stump too many people going out. Bucks going out to scout here just to see what's around the corner there. As you can see, the rest of the Surf Slayer guys are going to be coming in from spawning in, which is just below us here. As they start to build up for the next push here. They have got 8 Trebs still available. Trebs obviously are going to be pretty important here, um, whether they can bait into the Trebs and try to get into Allenburg. It's a, it's a tough map to get without any artillery to try and weaken spots and weaken areas to get in for a push. <laughs> I'm wondering when teams figure out that Keshek's ban against Surf Slayer is really helpful. <laughs> always good to ban Keshek. I'm not going to lie, as much as you love Keshek as a player yourself, it's always a good ban because they're so, so dangerous in terms of what you be, what you can do with them if you do it right. Even if you know you can do it right. So, so far we've got modiles, we've got some Senji Grenadiers, we've got more Fort Abrash and more Palace Guards, Iron Reapers, no Keshex, like I said, Keshex banned. Um, we do have a unit of Monastics out here on the other side, and we've also got another unit in, sub in, the, in the background for them. But it's a good setup here, we've got Imperial Spear Guards, Fort Abrash on this gate here, lots of heroes fighting on the wall here trying to bait a Treb here, but the Treb is incoming and, and kind of misses the first couple. I think they get away with this one here. Does hit the back of the Fort Abrashios down there though. But not enough to deter so many units. So we're kind of still matches. We're still matched up quite well, quite evenly in terms of unit numbers. 649 on the defense, 653 on the attack. And we have still pretty much everybody alive, bar one, on the defense. Another Treb incoming here. Is this going to hit the back of the Spear Guards? It does a very good job of hitting the back of the Spear Guards. ZX with the Senjis up top the wall here as well, trying to lean down hell on the the box, the death box just at the front gate here. This uh, camera is going at such a fast speed, I don't want it to be that fast then. And as you can see, some of the Pikes players pushing themselves up onto the wall now, just trying to be a nuisance on the wall here. But it is Palace Guards that are fighting there, Luko Steel and everything, trying to do a good job up there. Dark Flames, as Serfs push in the death box, straight into the wall. Going straight in into the right, trying to get themselves set up while well, the Senjis on the left hand side push down. There's a couple of units forcing their way in here, as you can see. Arca pushing full force with his Polax, trying to get the guys forward. Fort Abrash just pushing forward, just XVing as they move around the map. Fort Abrash is watching the back supply here as well, just in case. But they will fall because some, the, the owner of them has died. We've got a couple of couple of strong pushes coming in here though. In terms of uh, Surf Slayers, but Odin's leading just reacting pretty well to it. Around the back here, you've got a couple of units trying to flank around the back. Some palace guards from Kara. But 
Lots of charges coming in here. Makuta gets a pick, couple of kills there with that charge. And we are losing numbers. There we go. Odin's legions are down to five alive. And this is where it becomes crucial. Whether these Armager's charge is coming through. We're picking up the kill. Surf Slayers have got the advantage. 12 versus 3 here on the defense. They're going to struggle now to try and get out in time. Now it's going to be OP and Lex in the back here. Are they going to block off that spawn point? That is where it then becomes crucial. There is a couple of heroes trying to get themselves out here with some units. But the charge of Iron Reapers is going to wipe some of them units there. That is a good block off. And as you can see, any hero that is making their way... Cold Gift stays, stays on the point for as long as possible here, but Furita. Cold Gift will fall at some point here. There is plenty of heroes fighting him. He's doing a grand old job of staying alive for as long as possible. Furita is going to try and get himself through there. But Surf Slayers has done a fantastic job of pushing herself in there, pushing her way around and managing to get herself the spawn block as well for a few seconds to stop them spawning in. And that will be all she wrote there. GG, Surf Slayers pick up the first win there. Jackie Tree, MVP for that battle. I don't know what the goal was with that 10 man pull axe push, but oof, that was a push and a half. 12 assists here, 3 kills, and 82 unit kills for Jackie Tree. Makuta with a decent chunk here as well, 105 hero kills. Good job. Um, Uda's Legion did a, did a, a really good job of the defence. I thought their rotations were good. They got caught out quite quickly though. It looked like they were doing well on the defence. And then all of a sudden the numbers just started dropping. A few charges coming in from Makuta. And that wiped it. The Cav charge wiped a good amount of units. So we, uh, and then, yeah, pretty much called that game there for it. Um, as you can see, most of the fights up here um, kind of started in the main area of the map. Uh, in the in the home point, lots of units dying around there, lots of heroes dying. But in terms of the stats overall, Surf Slayers killed more heroes. It's only seven more heroes, but the seven more heroes definitely made a difference at the time that they did it. The the hero kills at the pr proper time did a great amount of work to eventually get the push and uh, stop them getting anybody back onto the point. Um, in terms of unit deaths, it's pretty even, pretty even. Um, obviously, Trebs were pretty good in terms of. The usage of them when they got got them used to kind of deter any of the heroes or uh, units going to the points where they were going to and then eventually using them on the final point there you know, to to stop any major pushes and stop the death box uh, having a, a strong enough death box for them pushing in that right hand side wall but very good job first off first major fight here of the night goes one nil to surf slayers we will be swapping over here and it'll be the other way around now so on the defense, you are now going to have Surf Slayers. And then on the attack, we are going to have Odin's Legion. It's going to be interesting to see how this works in this side of things now because We've seen how they did it, and an interesting strategy of going up there, around the top, and around the back there. So I wonder if uh, Odin's Legion will have a, something different, a different plan of doing attack for that one. What do you guys 